Jehovah, the name of Almighty God. The Bible book of Exodus, chapters 5 through 15, records a drama that has thrilled lovers of that name for generations. It is the story of Moses and the Israelites released from slavery, led up out of Egypt with a vast mixed company of others. It is a drama in which God's own name is involved, for according to Exodus chapter 9 verse 16, it took place in order to have Jehovah's name declared in all the earth. And since the Bible later promises that Jehovah's name will again be made known in our day, this thrilling story still involves us some 3,500 years later. Listen. Present the Hebrews and their God Jehovah request audience with you on a matter of utmost importance to both our great nation and their miserable interests. O oh, mighty Pharaoh, bring them before me. Hotep, demand of these idlers the reason for this intrusion. O oh, Moses and Aaron. How dare you slave agitators be so bold as to appear before Pharaoh? Agitators? Our holy one, majestic in appearance, mighty in strength. They should be flogged. Speak, Moses. But weigh your words carefully. Aaron, tell Pharaoh the words Jehovah has commanded. Oh, Pharaoh. This is what Jehovah, the God of Israel, has said. Send my people away, that they may celebrate a festival to me in the wilderness. Jehovah? The God of Israel? Who is Jehovah? So that I should obey his voice to send Israel away. I do not know Jehovah at all. And what is more, I am not going to send Israel away. Aaron, tell Pharaoh why we must go. Oh, Pharaoh, the God of the Hebrews has come in touch with us. We want to go, please, a journey of three days into the wilderness and sacrifice to Jehovah our God. Otherwise, he may strike at us with pestilence or with sword. Why is it Moses and Aaron? that you cause people to leave off from their works. Go, bearing your burdens. Look, the people of the land are now many, and you, you make them desist from their bearing of burdens. Come, man, we will leave. Pharaoh will not listen. Send Jehovah's people away, shall I? <laughs> Send Jehovah's people away? Lazy slaves, relaxing. Who tap? Yes, O Pharaoh. Are we still giving those Hebrews slaves straw with which to make bricks? Yes, Pharaoh. No more. Make those Hebrews work. Command the slave drivers and their officers to let the slaves gather straw for themselves. Moreover, the required amount of bricks that they were making formerly, you will further impose upon them. You must not make any reduction for them because they are relaxing. 
That is why they're crying. We want to go. We want to sacrifice to our God. <laughs> Let the service be heavy upon the men. Who is Jehovah that I should send his people away? <laughs> Consequently, the people scattered about over all the land of Egypt to gather stubble for straw. No more straw. Get straw for yourself. Pharaoh has commanded. Wallow in that stubble. Make those bricks. <gasps> you hit you, mommy. Don't cry for me, Isha. Finish your works, each one his work. But how can we make Son, bricks when you don't give us any straw? You too, boy. Day for day, just as when straw was available. All of you, gather that straw. Make those bricks. And you there, get back to work. You too, old man. Why did he treat us so differently? All of you. Because... We are different. How are we different, Father? The cry is, we're different because we're a people called by Jehovah's name, and, and we are no part of Egypt. Would they treat us nicer if we were Egyptians? Perhaps, but Jehovah wants his name to be known. He will show his hand against the Egyptians, and we must endure until then. And then we'll go? Yes, dear. And then we'll go. Good. Look, there's Moses, Aaron too. Troublemakers for all of us. May Jehovah look upon you and judge Moses and Aaron. Why did you have to go in and speak to Pharaoh? You made a smell offensive before Pharaoh and all his servants. They'll kill us all. And you told us we'd be delivered. Better off the way we were. My dear, dear brothers. Oh, Jehovah, why have you caused evil to this people? Why is it that you have sent me? For from the time that I went in before Pharaoh to speak in your name, he has done evil to this people, and you have by no means delivered your people. Moses! Now you will see what I shall do to Pharaoh. Because on account of a strong hand, he will send them away. I am Jehovah. Speak to Pharaoh everything that I am speaking to you. Thus it was that Jehovah spoke to Moses. Jehovah was determined that all, both Israelites and Egyptians, see the real issue that existed, the war between gods. How would Jehovah's name be exalted above all others? Now, Aaron, Jehovah has commanded that we meet Pharaoh this morning right here at the Nile River. But Moses, he won't let the people go. He thinks he's a god himself. Why must we continue to do this? Aaron, have courage and faith. If we do the work Jehovah asks us to do, he will bring the results in his due time. Well, may it come soon, my brother. May it come soon. Perhaps sooner than Pharaoh thinks. For Jehovah is going to turn the Nile River into blood. Why, that will ruin it. Kill the fish. The Egyptians will suffer from thirst. A blow to Egypt's gods that they won't forget for a while. Here comes Pharaoh now. Look at those priests, Jannies and Jambres. They stick to Pharaoh like leeches. Just to resist us and to make Pharaoh's heart harder. The hypocrites. Look. They see us. There's Moses. Moses! You troubler of Egypt and idler of my slaves! 
Are you so bold as to now disturb even my river worship? Does your Jehovah still have a word for me? Perhaps he has changed his mind now and decided it would be wise and safer for his people to send me an apology or perhaps even a blessing. Aaron, tell Pharaoh the words of Jehovah. O oh, Pharaoh, Jehovah, the God of the Hebrews, has sent me to you, saying, Send my people away, that they may serve me in the wilderness. But here you have not obeyed until now. Who is this who commands Pharaoh to obey? This is what Jehovah has said. By this you will know that I am Jehovah. Here I am striking with the rod that is in my hand upon the water that is in the Nile River. And it will certainly turn into blood. Sacrilege. What blasphemy against the river? And the river. fish will die. And the river will actually stink. And the Egyptians will simply have no stomach for drinking water from the Nile River. Go from their water vessels. Aaron, take your rod and stretch your hand out over the waters. <laughs> Am I to call before Hebrews? <laughs> Are the gods of our river to be shamed into? By the word of Jehovah. Look! The rod pours blood into the river. No, look. All the river is getting thick. And red, Pharaoh's water vessel. Yeah. Priests, I can see for myself what is happening. Put a stop to it. Call to the gods. Make the water pure. And the fish that were in the Nile River died. And the Nile River began to stink. And the Egyptians were unable to drink water from the Nile River. And the blood came to be in all the land of Egypt. But Pharaoh turned and went into his house. And he did not set his heart to have any regard for this either. And all the Egyptians went digging round about the Nile River for water to drink because they were unable to drink any water of the Nile River. And seven days came to be fulfilled after Jehovah's striking the Nile River. O oh, mighty Pharaoh, Lord of the city of Noph, potent of arm, living forever, life, prosperity, health. Two men, Moses and Aaron. Bring them before me. I know why they're here. Ah, uh, Moses and Aaron, have you come to see the foolishness of what you have done? The priests of Egypt have duplicated your simple trick, and there's not water anywhere, not even for you. Aaron. The word of Jehovah. O Pharaoh, Jehovah has said, Send my people away, that they may serve Jehovah. me. Jehovah! Jehovah! Why doesn't Jehovah speak for himself? <laughs> Quiet, old devil. Tell me, Aaron, what will Jehovah do to me if I do not send the Hebrews away? <laughs> If you keep refusing to send them away, Jehovah will plague all your territory with frogs. And the Nile River will fairly teem with frogs. And they will certainly come up and enter into your house and your inner bedroom and upon your couch and into the house of your servants and on your people and into your ovens and into your kneading troughs and on you, and on your people, and on all your servants, the frogs will come up. Has the water in the Nile already been so thoroughly restored that it will teem with frogs? <laughs> come here, he will leave. Do you not know that all the fish are dead? 
So from where are frogs to come? Oh, mighty Pharaoh, Moses and Aaron are leaving. Do you have a word for them? Let them leave. Let them call to their God for frogs. Perhaps they will call for fish also. And at the word of Jehovah, Aaron stretched his hand out over the waters of Egypt, and the frogs began to come up and to cover the land of Egypt. Sniveling slave women. You're worse than the frogs. How can I bake Pharaoh's bread with such a commotion? Master, they're in our name. Oh, oh, they're squashed all over the place. They're mixed in the dough. They're everywhere. Oh. The nasty things oh. scare me to death. Well, this is due to that cursed Moses and his god Jehovah. Oh. oh. How did they get in the ovens? How can I present Pharaoh with his bread today? Oh, oh, shoo. Ah, shoo. Ah, oh, I feel faint. Oh, oh, no. oh, oh, she's fainted. What should we oh, do? Pick her up. Pick her up. No, no, where would we put her? These cursed frogs are everywhere. They're disgusting. You know I'm beginning to seriously believe that Moses God Jehovah, Jehovah brought this on us after Jehovah, all. Jehovah, are you going to talk about him Jehovah too? did it. In the past, you could hardly get an Egyptian to even mention that. Well, name. a curse on Jehovah for sending these things. Be careful, Kabaz. You may be speaking evil of the oh. true God. I don't know about Ra and our medicine gods, but our frog goddess is helpless. I'm beginning to believe that Jehovah is the strongest <gasps> god of all. You be careful, Isis. You be careful. What you just said gets to Pharaoh, we'll all be thrown to the crocodiles. <laughs> You called, O Pharaoh? Clean these things out of here. They're on my very couch. I'm going mad from their croak. Yes, O Pharaoh. Not with your hands, Hotep. Get some baskets. Haven't those priests got here yet? Ah, cursed frogs. Call the slaves. Call the priests. But Pharaoh, if I called the army, they couldn't remove them. They're in the houses of all your servants, in the streets, in the courts, everywhere. Do something, old devil. In response to your call, we oh, had great difficulty wine. passing through the streets. Priest, because... it's high time that you got here. Get rid of these things. This Moses has turned our own gods into pests to kill us. There's no place these cursed frogs haven't penetrated. I'm sick. I found one in my bread. Where's that baker? I'll have his head. Do not let your heart be troubled, O oh, one rich in dread. I, Jambres, and my fellow priest Jannies can duplicate Moses' simple miracle. Our frog goddess is strong. She's backing us up. O oh, goddess of frogs, Hex, breather of life. Bring forth frogs! So, Moses has not done something so clever after all. But, we don't need more frogs. Get rid of these. That's what I want, Jamrys. We've been calling on the goddess since the rising of the sun disk, my lord. But Hect is offended by this Moses. She demands that you get rid of him. Besides... The frogs are plaguing the Hebrews just as much as us. So where is their victory? Can a mere Hebrew cause our own goddess to punish us? Oh, no. It is this god Jehovah who is humiliating me. Jehovah is doing this to me. Get out of here and have Moses brought in. I'll promise him anything to get rid of these things. Almighty Pharaoh, 
Lord of the city of Noah, Moses, my Hebrew friends, and Aaron, come forward. Entreat Jehovah that he may remove the frogs from me and my people. For I want to send your people away that they may sacrifice to Jehovah. Do you really want to send the people away? You take the glory over me to say when I shall make entreaty for you. Tomorrow! Tomorrow! Just get rid of these frogs! Tomorrow it will be, according to your word, in order that you may know that there is no one else like Jehovah, our God. The frogs will certainly turn away from you and your houses and all your servants and your people. Only in the Nile River will they be left. Accordingly, Moses and Aaron went out from Pharaoh, and Moses cried out to Jehovah, and the frogs began to die off. And they went piling them up, heaps upon heaps, and the land began to stink. But Pharaoh made his heart unresponsive, and he did not let the people go. Moses! Here I am. Say to Aaron, Stretch your rod out, and strike the dust of the earth, and it must become gnats in all the land of Egypt. So Aaron stretched out his hand with his rod and struck the dust of the earth. And all the dust of the earth became gnats in all the land of Egypt. Pharaoh! <laughs> Pharaoh! <coughs> Priests, where have you been? Your secret arts, these nets. Oh, Pharaoh, we've tried, but we're unable. Unable. We've tried to bring forth gnats, but we're unable. Oh, vain fool. This is not an ordinary miracle. <laughs> it's the finger of God. It is almighty God, Jehovah. Jehovah, Jehovah. Must my own priest say that name too? Oh, gods of Egypt. We humbly request, O oh, great one, that you... Let his people go! Worthless priests! Worthless gods! How am I to cope with... No! No! I'll never let the Hebrews go! Moses! Here I am! Get up early in the morning and take a position in front of Pharaoh. He is coming out to the water. And you must say to him, If you are not sending my people away, here I am sending upon you and your servants and your people and into your houses the gadfly. And the houses of Egypt will simply be full of the gadfly and also the ground upon which they are. And on that day, I shall certainly make the land of Goshen upon which my people are standing distinct, that no gadfly may exist there, in order that you may know that I am Jehovah. And I shall indeed set a demarcation between my people and your people. Tomorrow, this sign will take place. And the next day, heavy swarms of gadflies began to invade the house of Pharaoh, the houses of his servants, and all the land of Egypt. And the land came to ruin. Moses, Aaron, 
I'm a reasonable man. Is it for such a big thing that I, my nation, must be plagued these four times? Why must you insist that Israel leave Egypt to sacrifice? Can't flies. Can you not sacrifice here? Go sacrifice to your God in the land. It is not admissible to do so. Why is it not admissible? I, Pharaoh, give you permission. Oh, Pharaoh, our people are no part of Egypt. Your people have many gods. You worship cattle and bulls and goats and pigeons. These are the very offerings we would sacrifice. Suppose we would sacrifice a thing detestable to the Egyptians before their eyes. Would they not stone us? So we shall leave Egypt to sacrifice, just as Jehovah our God has commanded us. I, I shall send you away, and you will indeed sacrifice to Jehovah your God in the wilderness. Only do not make it quite so far away that you are going, and make a treaty in my behalf. Stop these gadflies. Here we are going forth from you, and we shall indeed entreat Jehovah and the gadflies will turn away from you tomorrow. Only let not Pharaoh trifle again in not sending the people away to sacrifice to Jehovah. So Jehovah did according to Moses' word. And the gadflies turned away from Pharaoh, his servants and his people. Not one was left. However, Pharaoh made his heart unresponsive this time also, and did not send the people away. Consequently, Jehovah's hand came upon the livestock in their fields. On the horses, the asses, the camels, the herd, and the flock, a very heavy pestilence. And all sorts of livestock of Egypt began to die. But not one of the livestock of the sons of Israel died. Why do you kneel here at the altar, Pharaoh? Jabris? Do not let your heart be troubled, for the pestilence that has befallen the livestock of Egypt is no fault of the gods. Simply a coincidence of the unsanitary conditions that the people have tolerated. Why is it then, Janis, that when I send a messenger to Goshen to the Hebrews, look, he returns, and not so much as one of Israel's livestock has died. Diseases? tend to stay within a fixed area, and the contamination... And who fixes Egypt as the area? Do not let these magical tricks trouble you, my lord. Are not we ourselves healthy? Has not the health of the poorest Egyptian been better than that of the richest Hebrew slave? You are a fool, Jannes, and Jambres, you make me sick. Nevertheless, I will not let the Hebrews go, no! I will not send the people away. So Jehovah said to Moses and Aaron, Take for yourselves both hands full of soot from a kiln, and Moses must toss it toward the heavens in Pharaoh's sight. And it must become boils, breaking out with blisters upon man and beast in all the land of Egypt. So they stood before Pharaoh and did just so.
Slaves! Slaves! Bring water for Pharaoh! He's burning with fever! Slaves! Hebrews? Ah, healthy Hebrews! Are you the only ones that can show up when Pharaoh needs help most? Yes, Master Hotep. All your Egyptian servants are sick, and you, uh, you yourself need attention. Ah, never mind that. The Pharaoh needs water and ointment. Hotep! Hotep! Yes, my lord. My medicine men, my doctors, my priests and sorcerers, jamborees and jannies. Where are those worthless fakers? When I need them most, they're not here. Six plagues now from Jehovah, and they have done absolutely nothing. I'll send for them immediately. But wait, here comes Ainina, their temple gatekeeper and spokesman. He looks very sick himself. Ainina. Do you have any word from the priests? Any cure for us? The priests wish you life, prosperity, and health, my lord. May you celebrate a million jubilees. Jannies, Jambres, and the magic-practicing priests and sorcerers beg Pharaoh's good pleasure and his merciful indulgence that we may be excused from appearing before Pharaoh today. For we are sick in bed. Oh, gods of Egypt! Are this Moses and his god Jehovah going to bring us all to the land of the dead? May my god, I'm in Ra, so do to me and more before I let those Hebrews go. <coughs> Water! Oh, death! <coughs> Why did Jehovah continue to tolerate Pharaoh's obstinance? Exodus chapter 9 verse 16 records, For this cause I have kept you in existence, for the sake of showing you my power, and in order to have my name declared in all the earth. But was Pharaoh's unresponsive heart to bring all Egypt to ruin? What of those Egyptians who had begun to pay attention to Jehovah's name? Jehovah's pronouncement of a seventh plague left open a way out for them. Here I am causing it to rain down tomorrow about this time, a very heavy hail, the like of which has never occurred in Egypt from the day it was founded until now. And now, sin. Bring all your livestock and all that is yours in the field under shelter. As for any man and beast that will be found in the field and not gathered into the house, the hail will have to come down upon them and they will have to die. And so a division began to be made among the people of Egypt. Anyone who feared Jehovah's word among Pharaoh's servants caused his own servants and his livestock to flee into the houses. But whoever did not set his heart to have any regard for Jehovah's word left his servants and his livestock in the field. And Jehovah gave thunders and hail and fire would run down to earth. Thus. There came hail and fire quivering in among the hail. And the hail went striking at all the land of Egypt. The hail struck everything that was in the field, from man to beast and all sorts of vegetation of the field. And it shattered all sorts of trees of the field. land 
of Goshen, where the sons of Israel were, there occurred no hail. Finally, Pharaoh called Moses and Aaron. Moses, Aaron, I have sinned this time. Jehovah is righteous and I and my people are in the wrong. Entreat Jehovah that this may be enough of the occurring of God's thunders and hail. Then I am willing to send you away and you will not delay any longer. So Moses went out of the city from Pharaoh and spread his hands up to Jehovah. And the thunders and the hail began to stop. But again Pharaoh's heart continued obstinate. And again Moses presented himself before Pharaoh. Master, should we not listen to Moses and Aaron this time? Egypt is suffering ruin. Silence, Hotep. I'll deal with these hated enemies of mine. Moses and Aaron. Look. See, the sun god still rules brightly in the heavens, and you Hebrews are not free. Do you think that Pharaoh can be brought to bargain with your Jehovah? How long must you refuse to submit yourself to Jehovah? Send Jehovah's people away that they may serve him. For if you continue refusing to send Jehovah's people away, here Jehovah is bringing locusts within locusts. your boundaries tomorrow. And they will actually cover the visible surface of the earth. And it will not be possible to see the earth and they will simply eat up the rest of what has escaped, What's left what has eat? been left to you people by the hail. Hunger. And they will certainly eat every sprouting tree of yours out of the field, and your houses, and the houses of all your servants, and the houses of all Egypt will be filled will to an extent that your fathers and your fathers' fathers have not seen it from the day of their existing upon the ground until this day. We'll not wait for Pharaoh's response, Aaron. Let us leave. Oh, Lord, Pharaoh, don't let them walk out this time. How long will this man prove to be a snare to us? Oh, Pharaoh, our cattle are slaughtered. There's not enough food for us now. We'll all die. We can't endure such a plague as this. Please send them in away that they may serve Jehovah their God. Please, we beg you, send them away. Don't you yet know that Egypt has perished? Are even you, trusted officers of my court, turning Hebrew? All right, then. Call Moses and Aaron back. Harold, have the men brought back. Very well, Moses. I'm willing to be reasonable with you. Go, serve Jehovah your God. But uh, tell me, please, who in particular are the ones going? With our young people and our old people we shall go. With our sons and our daughters. With our sheep and our cattle we shall go. For we have a festival to Jehovah. Aha! And should I go with you too? Let it prove to be so that Jehovah is with you when I shall send you and your little ones away. See, on the contrary, something evil is your aim. Little ones, no. Go, please, you who are able-bodied men, and serve Jehovah, because that is what you are seeking to secure. Guards, drive them away from my son.
Jehovah now said to Moses, Stretch your hand out over the land of Egypt for the locust. At once Moses stretched his rod out over the land of Egypt, and Jehovah caused an east wind to blow upon the land all that day and all night. The morning came, and the east wind carried the locusts. And the locusts began to settle down upon all the territory of Egypt. And they went covering the visible surface of the entire land. And the land grew dark. And they went on eating up all the vegetation of the land, and all the fruit of the trees that the hail had left. And there was left nothing green on the trees or on the vegetation of the field in all the land of Egypt. I said, bring them, bring Moses and Aaron before me. Moses, I have sinned against Jehovah your God and against you. And now pardon, please, my sin just this once and entreat Jehovah your God that he may turn away just this deadly plague from upon me. So Moses went out from Pharaoh and made entreaty to Jehovah. Then Jehovah made a shift to a very stiff west wind and it carried the locusts away and drove them out into the Red Sea. Not a single locust was let remain in all the territory of Egypt. However, Jehovah let Pharaoh's heart become obstinate, and he did not send the sons of Israel away. How beautiful are the fields of Goshen, rich and green. And mother. The flowers are so bright and pretty. But look at the fields where they made us work in Egypt. How ugly. Like a barren wasteland. The hail and the locusts. Do you think we'll be here much longer? How much longer till the end, Mother? We can only wait and see. Jehovah has been good to his people, sparing us. How thankful we should be for his protection. How can we doubt anything that he promises? Look! The sky over Egypt! Mother, look! What's happening to the sky? I don't know, dear. It's getting gray and ominous. Yet, there's not a cloud in the sky. I can't see anything in Egypt anymore. It suddenly looks like, like a black wall of death, as high as you can see. It must be another plague from Jehovah. The ninth. And a gloomy darkness began to occur in all the land of Egypt for three days. They did not see one another, and none of them got up from his own place three days. But for all the sons of Israel, there proved to be light in their dwellings. Still, Pharaoh could not find it in his heart to let all Israel go up out of Egypt. Go! Serve Jehovah! Only your sheep and your cattle will be detained. Uh, your little ones also may go with you. You yourself will also give into our hands sacrifices, as we must render them to Jehovah our God. And our livestock will also go with us. Not a hoof will be allowed to remain, because it is from them that we shall take some to worship Jehovah our God. No! You go, Sir Jehovah. Only your sheep. Ah! What am I doing bargaining with Hebrews? Am I not Pharaoh? Who is it that dictates to Pharaoh his terms for release? No, no! I will not send your people away. You, Moses, Aaron, get out from me. Watch yourself. 
Do not try to see my face again. That is the way you have spoken. I shall not try to see your face anymore. However, this is what Jehovah has said. About midnight, I'm going out into the midst of Egypt, and every firstborn in the land of Egypt must die. From the firstborn of Pharaoh, who is sitting on his throne, to the firstborn of the maidservant, who is at the handmill, and every firstborn of beast. You miserable troubler of Egypt, and cause there will certainly to my occur slaves. a great outcry in all the land of Egypt, the like of which has never yet occurred, and the like of which will never be brought about again. But against any of the sons of Israel will no dark sharpen its tongue from man to beast, in order that you people may know that Jehovah can make a distinction between the Egyptians oh, please, and bastard. the sons my of Israel. son, for the sake of my silence! And all these servants of yours will certainly come down to me and prostrate themselves to me, saying, Go! And after that, I shall go out. Get out of my sight! Get out! Get out! Do not try to see my face again, Moses! Because on the day of your seeing my face, you will die! So you have spoken. I shall not try to see your face any more. <laughs> After that, the people of Israel began to gather themselves together by families, according to the word of Jehovah by Moses. A tenth and final plague would finally bring Pharaoh to submission, imploring the Israelites to leave. Vikri, bring me the mantles there on the bench, and the water skins. Why are we packing to travel? Father, are we going someplace? Jehovah has commanded us through Moses to be ready to leave Egypt tonight. We're going tonight? We're really leaving Egypt? Oh, boy, let me run next door and tell John... Vikri, don't leave the house. Oh, Mother, I just Bikri, want Vikri, to... you must stay inside the house under the protection of the blood of the lamb we sprinkled on the doorposts. Why, Father? I told you why, Isha. About midnight... The angel of Jehovah is going to pass over all the houses in Egypt and strike dead every firstborn in all the land. Only among the families of God's people who are inside their houses where the blood is sprinkled on the doorposts will Jehovah's angel pass over us and spare our firstborn. Like you, Bikri. Come here to the table, my son. Are we going to eat now, mother? Yes, Isha. Come to the table. Father, isn't it late to be eating? Yes, but this is a sacred night and a meal for which we owe special thanks. Now, let us pray. O oh, Jehovah, you are our God, and we laud you. We raise you on high. You are powerful in ability. Your right hand can shatter an enemy. And in the abundance of your superiority, you can throw down those who rise up against you. You send out your burning anger, and it eats them up like stubble. O Jehovah, who among the gods is like you? Will you, in your loving kindness, please, lead us your people whom you have recovered? Will you please, in your strength, conduct us to your holy abiding place? We thank you for this Passover supper and for our salvation through the blood of the Lamb. Amen. Aren't we going to recline at the table, Father? Or are we just going to stand? We will stand. We must eat it in haste. 
Where are the pots of meat, Mother? We have roast lamb tonight, my son. And there are unfermented cakes and bitter greens. Aren't we going to have any fruit? Yes, where are the watermelons and the lemon Father, cakes? Why are you holding your watermelon? It's very confusing. Staff? Father, what does all this mean? Bikrai, Isha, this is a special night. It is a sacrifice of the Passover to Jehovah, who passes over the houses of the sons of Israel in Egypt. He plagues the Egyptians, but he will deliver our house. There's not even time to ferment the cakes. Jehovah has commanded that we celebrate this meal in readiness for deliverance, with our hips girded, sandals on our feet, and staff in hand. Mom, I'm scared. Oh, Jehovah's with us, Isha. You have nothing to fear. Will the angel strike me, Father? Jehovah's angel strikes down only the firstborn of Egypt. Pharaoh of Egypt, rise up, my son. For you and I are gods to the people, and they worship us as one. And the time has not come for your pyramid to be built, and the years of your rule are yet to come. For it is not fitting for the son of Pharaoh to lie down at the word of a Hebrew. <laughs> oh, oh, my son, my son, my son. Your son is with the gods now. Oh, Pharaoh, bring Moses before me. But Pharaoh, you yourself say... Bring Moses before me now! <laughs> Moses, Moses, why has it come to this? Could not your God accept release on my terms? Oh, my son! My son, my son. <laughs> Moses has arrived, my lord. Moses, Aaron, get up. Get out from in the midst of my people. You and the other sons of Israel, go, serve Jehovah. Take your flocks, take your herds, just as you have stated, and go. Bless me, and go. Praise Jehovah. The bondage is ended. Praise Jehovah. Praise Jehovah. Prepare for departure! Moses has been told to get out of the midst of the Egyptians, to take our flocks and herds and go! Prepare for departure! Prepare for departure! That means we're free! At last, Jehovah be praised! May I go outside now? Yes, here, quickly. Gather these bundles and put them on the donkey. All right, Father. But, Father, it's midnight. Yes, and we must leave now. We must join the others of my father's house. Excuse me, my brother. Yes, Moses? This Egyptian will join us. May he accompany your household? I am Hotep, my lord. Please, as a fellow slave, may I worship Jehovah with you? Come, and may Jehovah be your refuge. 
And the sons of Israel proceeded to depart, to the number of 600,000 able-bodied men on foot, besides little ones. And a vast mixed company also went up with them, as well as flocks and herds, a very numerous stock of animals. So all the sons of Israel did just as Jehovah had commanded Moses and Aaron. Thus, Jehovah brought the sons of Israel together with their armies out of the land of Egypt. Come here, dear little children. See how Jehovah is blessing us. See how good he is to us. Mighty Pharaoh, over what will you now rule? The gods are unable to restore the life of your son, and all the Hebrews have run away. What will they say in Assyria when they hear that Egypt is a nation unable to hold on to its slaves? O oh, gods of Egypt! What is this we have done in that we have sent Israel away from slaving for us? It is their God, Jehovah, who killed your son. It is their God, Jehovah, who has ruined Egypt. And who will repay Jehovah? Jehovah, Jehovah! May I never hear that name again! Hotep! Hotep has gone with the Hebrews, my lord. With the Hebrews? Yes, my lord. Call Hormheb, the chief of the host. Once, my lord. Call the charioteers. Prepare the chariots. Gather the cavalry, the military forces, the elite warriors of all Egypt. Repay the Hebrews the ruin of their god. Almighty Pharaoh, the outpost report that the Hebrews did not leave by way of Philistia, but encamped first at Etham and then turned back and encamped at Pi Hirath. The Israelites are wandering in confusion. I shall pursue them, overtake them. Oh, Egypt! that we should come back here when we were already at Etham. But we've come to appreciate that Jehovah is leading the way. The pillar of fire lights up the whole sky, Father. Look, Isha, you can see the reflections up ahead of us on the seashore. 
And that is how Jehovah shows Moses the way, Isha, with the bright, tall pillar of fire by night and the pillar of cloud by day. How lovingly Jehovah inspires our confidence. It is amazing. It just seems strange that we should come southeast to the shore of the Red Sea when we could have gone northeast straight out of Egypt. Mother, what was that? What was what, dear? Why, it's Pharaoh's armies. It is. They've come after it us. It is Pharaoh's And they've trapped us in the Mother, sea. what should we do? Well, what can we what do now? Do? Where can we go? Do we have to fight them, Father? Jehovah is our salvation. He will save us. Everyone stay calm. Look, Moses will speak to us. Do not be afraid, my brothers. Stand firm and see the salvation of Jehovah, which he will perform for you today. For the Egyptians, whom you do see today, you will not see again. No, never again. Jehovah himself will fight for you, and you yourselves will be silent. O oh, Israel, break camp. Break camp. Break camp. Assemble yourselves in battle formation, facing the sea. Moses, why do they keep crying out to me? Lift up your rod, stretch your hand out over the sea and split it apart, that the sons of Israel may go through the midst of the sea on dry land. And the Egyptians will certainly know that I am Jehovah, when I get glory for myself by means of Pharaoh, his war chariots, and his cavalrymen. Father, look! The pillar of fire is picking itself up and coming back over us. It's coming between us and the Egyptians. We're saved. Jehovah is saved. Look at the waves on the sea. Mighty Pharaoh, for several hours now, this, this cloud has blocked the Hebrews from our attack. We've been waiting for an opening to get at them, but we can't even see them. They must not escape, Hormheb. We haven't even come near them all night. My lord, Shall the Shall Egypt become a laughingstock, a nation that could not even hold out to its own slaves? But Pharaoh, how can we attack? This blinding cloud separating us it's no ordinary cloud it's it's fear inspiring it just may be the power of their god Je don't say that thing my lord my lord look the cloud is moving and the hebrews are gone gone moved out moved out to where into the sea oh pharaoh the hebrews are crossing the sea on dry ground they're way out in the seabed, and it's dry. The water is standing up like walls, as if, as if it's curdled. Look, never I has such a thing happened. I can see for myself, you miserable fools. Is it not full moon? The sea has opened back. Why, it looks like an hour's walk from wall to wall. We've waited too long already. We'll leave their bodies on the sea. Bed. But Pharaoh, what if the walls... Kill in his are... armor any coward that turns back. Yes, my lord. Hormhead, command the host. Hosts of Egypt! 
Today we will take revenge for our firstborn. Death to the Hebrews. Death to the Hebrews. Death to Moses. Death to Moses. Death to their God. As we live, so live the gods of Egypt. Into the seabed. <laughs> Thus the Egyptians took up the pursuit, and all the horses of Pharaoh, his war chariots, and his cavalrymen began going in after them, into the midst of the sea. it came about during the morning watch that Jehovah began to look out upon the camp of the Egyptians from within the pillar of fire and cloud. And he went throwing the camp of the Egyptians into confusion. And he kept taking wheels off their chariots so that they were driving them with difficulty. The cloud is still blocking us, still blocking the us! The cloud! Lightning is flashing out of it! The rain is turning the seabed into a mire. Let us flee from any contact with Israel, because Jehovah certainly fights for them against the Let us retreat. Let Forward, us retreat. you cowards! For the name of Pharaoh and the gods of Egypt! How can we fight against the heavens? What good are chariots without wheels? This is no time for galling. Hurry, get up here on the shore. We're hurrying, Father, we're hurrying. Are they the last? Yes, all Israel is on shore. All Israel on shore! All Israel on shore! All Israel on shore! Moses, stretch out your hand over the sea that the waters may come back over the Egyptians, their war chariots, and their cavalrymen. We have them now. We have them now. Look, the sea, walls of water, they're closing in. Help me, help me. Every man for himself. Retreat, retreat. It's too late. Oh, save us, Pharaoh, save us! Oh, our gods! Jehovah! Let us sing to Jehovah, for he has become highly exalted. The horse and its rider he has pitched into the sea. Thus, on that day, Jehovah saved Israel from the hand of the Egyptians. And Israel got to see the Egyptians dead on the seashore. What a vindication of Jehovah's name and of the faith his people manifested. All the earth came to know that victory belongs to Jehovah. And just as Jehovah cast Pharaoh, his chariots and his military forces into the sea, so he will certainly break kings to pieces on the day of his anger at the end of the present wicked system of things. And again, all the earth will come to know his name. 
now, today. Nearly 35 centuries after Jehovah's victory at the Red Sea, Jehovah's Witnesses and a vast mixed company with them await the blessings of a promised land, a righteous government by God over all the earth. The evidence is that we are on its border. Is that your confidence? Then join your voice with his people in singing the victory song. Sound the witness everywhere in reverential fear of the most exalted name in the universe, Jehovah. Listen. Sing.